Teach me, Jason. Teach me, buddy. So a six seven that's broke. I can't believe it. But this one's rocking and knocking. Let's so. hear it. Has it got blow by? I don't know, huh? I don't know. Let's check it out. My goodness, could we get a bigger bumper on the front of this thing? Holy crap. What's this? He's got the, is that an aftermarket, another fuel filter he's got up here? That one right there by your so hand. There's so much aftermarket stuff on this. Is there? Yeah. Let's fire it up. <clears throat> He don't have blow by, but man, he's got a heck of a knock in that thing. That does not sound happy. Do you know anything, the history of it or anything? Nothing. Okay, let's get the front bumper off. What have you like found? That. Yeah, what is that? It's, it's a shoddy job is what that is. Hey, did he weld that on there? Yeah. You know, I That's saw cool. that when I was, and my brain didn't register it. Oh, I register it. Well. I'm also registering all the missing bolts I got. But what's the deal there? Have we found anything else yet besides this yeah. hokiness right here? Well, there's a bell housing bolt that's just hanging out. The only thing that kept that from falling out was the exhaust. What's this hokiness back here with all this Messed up wiring. Yeah, that's an air pump for air oh, ride. Oh, he's got air ride on this yeah. thing, dualies. Oh, okay. All right, well, it looks like you're shredding it pretty good, man. Where's the one you're putting in it? Is it hanging I, over I, there? Is that the one hanging over there? No, I think it's over in the warehouse. Oh. The one we're putting in here has got some upgrades too, right? This has just got switched over to me, and I just been trying to get it in, so I just got it in this Well, morning. he's got one. He's got a fence. He's got billet caps on it. He's got the girdle and all that stuff, but he said he, it was one that you were doing and your oil pan wouldn't fit. Oh, that's on another truck? Yeah, that's that twin turbo. Okay, I was there. like, why is he doing that if this guy's... Okay. starter bolt. Got the wrong starter bolt in the other hole, so...
no. What is that? What the heck? This is nasty, nasty. Well, here's some that don't that don't look right. Yeah, all this extra silicone in here. Look at this. Same thing again. Somebody's resealed this pan and used way too much silicone. Could have been a plugged up piston squirter. Got a piston all hot and it cracked the piston. Didn't have a lot of blow by though, man. It did have a lot of noise. It's all yours. Oh, shit. I just see if I can see anything dark and I can't. Well, I guess we'll finish tearing it down and we'll find out what the deal is. This is Dave up at Dave's Auto in Centerville. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm the owner here, and I'm, I'm getting in the middle of this because Matt, my service rider, was telling me a story about this truck that you guys had had the crankshaft ground and a piston and a rod replaced. Is that, am I getting that correctly? Yes, sir, you are. Are you familiar with that ticket, you know, that repair? Were you involved? Because I'm assuming this is a work truck. It's a work truck. I bought it from a buddy of mine that had it, uh, had very low miles. Mechanic supposedly took the crank in, we sent the crank in, had it turned, put new mains in it, put one piston in it, and sent it off and it didn't last very long. So did you buy the truck? Had the motor already been done by this mechanic shop? Or did you buy the truck and then have it no. done? I bought the truck, it was it was already broken, and then we uh, attempted to get it fixed. Oh, I got it. okay. So a thousand miles it ran and then it started knocking and we parked it. I kind of wonder, was the truck making a rod knock noise? Is that why they just did the crank and the piston and the rod? Oh. That's kind of like just a band-aid on it, you know, I'm, I mean. No, I know. I think they band-aided it, to be honest with you. I mean, was this a machine shop or just a, a general shop and he probably so had the... went to a machine shop. And then the machine shop sent him the parts and he put it together. Let me let me bring you up to date and tell you where we're at with it. We uh, we got the motor out yesterday or the day before. It's in the machine shop. It has not been tore down today, but uh, my son or one of the other guys will be tearing down the, the engine and doing a digital inspection on it. So at that point, we'll know a little more than we know right now about you know how the crank was ground, you know what kind of quality all that work was. But I can tell you that whoever resealed this motor up and did the install was terrible. That's why I didn't even deal with the guy anymore. Everything he's touched has been garbage. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's missing There's missing bolts, ground straps not put back on, hardware that's not only missing, but the wrong strip. You know, it, it, it's like some 12-year-old kid did this, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I believe you. <laughs> I, be, I believe you. you know, and, uh, all right. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna rip the motor down and do our core inspection. We're gonna find out a little more about what, what took this motor out and everything. And then Matthew and myself will probably get back to you about that inspection, we'll keep going. We'll also have a list of uh, any other items that are needed for you. So stay tuned and we'll be back. We'll circle back to you here within a day. Hey, I appreciate you calling me yourself. Um, just keep me in touch, I need that truck. I got I've you. Been appreciate it, bye bye. I spoke to the customer on the phone. Oh, you know, the stories always get bizarre with, I mean, honestly. So he brought it up from, uh, was it New Mexico or Arizona? And had it brought up to us because his mechanic down there, he couldn't stand the guy. But apparently, somebody put a crank kit, ground the crank and put one piston and a rod in here, and he didn't even get a thousand miles out of it. We're gonna tear this motor down and uh, kind of find out why it failed. I got a feeling that uh, whoever ground the crank didn't do a very good job because my son's a great crank grinder, but there are no good crank grinders left in this country that I can find. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like.
Holy crap. It looks like the Babbage just came off of the shell, to be honest with you. I don't see dirt. I just see where the Babbit failed. That's what happened the failure first time. Dang. This thing threw a rod, and that's the damage they didn't clean up. That'll cut your hand. You can see where the rod came apart. Place for the crank to break too. Yeah. You know, somebody out there. That's the other mains out of the other journals. Yeah. The same brand. Yeah, I think so. Please. Oh, DNJ. Oh my gosh. Yep. Cheapest bearing ever made. Oh gosh. I've done a lot of motors. I've never really seen. That looks like a bearing failure. Yeah, right? it just does. So we're gonna this manual here. It's failure analysis book made by Automotive Engine Rebuilders Association. Great organization. I've been a member for oh man, 25 plus years. It's not perfect, but it kind of gives us an idea. Let's look here and see if we can find something that'll be helpful to us. This is what's messing me up. Now this that, would be my guess actually. The way what could do that because they've ground this crankshaft, if they didn't polish that correctly, the ferrite burrs will chew that bearing up and that bearing will polish. I guess we could crankshaft. do a, an RA, you well, know. Well, now it's polished, the yeah, bearing's polished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you look at some of this, you can see the recording from the grinding wheel. I think it's polished is what happened. It didn't receive a polish? Yeah, or they didn't polish it cor correctly. When you, when you grind a crank, the crank's turning one way and the grinding wheel's coming in and it's, and it's grinding that metal and it's making little waves that look like this. Looks like Velcro. Yeah, that's a good one. And so what you're polishing is, is you're turning the crank the other way and you're knocking that off, that, that Velcro, the, the fur. Ferrite burrs. Yeah, you can't see it, you can't feel it, but it's there. That's what he's talking about. Any crank that you grind needs to be polished. It looks like the bearing's been really hot. It's got this bluing on the edge. I mean, look, it's just kind of pushed the, the Babbitt I mean, it just melted the Babbitt and covered up the oil hole. If anybody's got any idea why that one bearing looks like that, the journal looks fine, you know, chime in, man. Get to, tell me what you think. Here's the other problem this block had. This is the piston that failed in, the, uh, in that hole, and it also broke the uh, oil squirter. That, that, that was sheared off and in the pan. You can see the rings are frozen in the land. I, I think maybe cheap parts. Cheap parts, and I, you know, I think that when they did have the failure, they didn't really clean it out. You know, they just threw parts in it because if you look at the old lifters, you can see all the material that was running through that uh, lifter, yeah, beating yeah. the crap out of lifters. Popped one piston uh, in yeah. it and threw a crank yeah, in it. Yeah, that, that's bailing wire and band-aids. It'll get you out of the ditch, man. That's about all it's good for. Jason's about got this motor done and ready to put in. I mean, you do so many of these six sevens, you get pretty good at them, but I'll tell you, look how clean all our, uh, all our work is. This guy just wanted it kind of a gunmetal finish. He's tagging all his bolts that he's torqued. These pans here, this, I'm going to show you this pan on the 6.7. If you'll notice, this gasket groove in here. That's a, they did that up until 2014 on, this, on the uh, 6.7 power stroke. Then on the 2015 and newer, they got rid of that groove. And I'm thinking the reason they got rid of that groove is that's a tool path and that costs money to do that. If you can ever find a pan, I think this is a much better pan. This is a major, this is a common leak on the Ford 6.7 from 2015 on because there is no pan rail there and you just use a gasket sealer. You good? Uh, to the right. Yeah. Just push it in. Up, up, up. a little bit. Mm. Okay, hold on. We do so many of these. I think my guys could do them in their sleep, but that don't mean it's easy. Okay, th this bolt hole's going to here? Yes, sir. Okay. You get a yeah, dowel. I can see that. Right okay. Okay, I, we get, looks like we just got to go down about an inch. You ready? Yeah. Okay, up just a hair. What are those, 13 millimeter? Yeah, but yeah. I gotta line this torque converter up. Push it over that. You gotta bring it your way a little bit. <clears throat> hang on. Yeah, we ain't back far enough, dude. Okay, that's it. There you go. Hang on, hang on. You got it ready? There you go. Now let it down. We just pin there we go. That should be it. Sometimes it needs a little bit of finagling. That's the word of the day, finagle. 
All right, cool. Team Mill. This is the uh, six seven we got up and running. You took it on a test drive and heard of whizzing? Yeah, uh, hiss. Hissing, which usually means a boost leak. Remember, condition cause correction confirmed. So he would it, he, the condition was a blown up motor. We replaced it. We did all that. Then he was confirming the repair during that confirmation. He's noticed something else. So we're going to smoke test the uh, boost side of the system and find out where we got a boost leak. Now it could be. Uh, something that we did, a hose clamp, you know, that's why you have to check your work. Or it could be something else that was already broken that the customer never fixed before, you know, the engine blew up and we just didn't see it. These do have a plastic manifold on them and they do break and crack. So uh, we'll check that out. Let's check it out, man. Well, it doesn't look like he has a leak, bro. It doesn't look like it, does it? No, pull that out of there. Make sure, have you got pressure in there? 10 PSI. Nope. Dude, it might just be a loud intake. Yeah, just I, a loud intake. Well, it's boosting it so freaking hard. It boosted it so hard, I blew apart that hose. See that new hose right there? Uh-huh. And it blew it to pieces on the, I mean, I didn't even get in front of the other shop. All right, let's uh, get it together. Take it for a ride. So we've got a check engine light on this. Uh, the guy has a tune on it. And this tune doesn't even support uh, uh, the, the 450 chassis. We're going to test drive it. He's also got all his uh, DPF stuff just taped to the frame hanging there. You know, this is where I'll have to have a conversation. We've put a motor in it, and it will not function correctly with the tune that he's got on here. And that is a concern for me as a motor builder because excessive soot buildup, you know, on the rings, all these things can cause. Uh, my motor to uh, suffer dire consequences, I'll put it that way. We've done our job, we'll find out if he's interested in uh, getting the proper tune on here and the components to make this truck function the way it was designed to do. Well, the engine sounds real good and he's also got a clock spring issue, I can't reset his oil stuff through his computer here. There's some other things the trucks need. When you get it up and running and you take it for a test drive, it's in your best interest to make sure that you document all these uh, conditions that can be a problem not only for the work that you performed but you know for stuff you didn't even touch like you know the clock spring and the steering wheel. We'll take it back we'll make some notes call the gentleman and see if he wants to get the rest of this fixed now that we've got a motor up and running. Anyway thanks for watching and uh, happy Memorial Day. <laughs>